Hmm, this seems interesting. What are the most must-have mods? Ooh, seems interesting. What's this? Holy fuck, this intro is so late, I don't even know if I can call this a review anymore. But, obviously, most people here have the DLC. I'm not gonna try and avoid spoilers. If you care about them, then I'm gonna go ahead and say whether or not I like this DLC right now. Ready? 5 out of 10. If not for the resulting mods that will require this DLC, I would actually say pass on it. I mean, many of my gripes also showed up in one way or another in Far Harbor. The only difference is that Harbor had an interesting plot that kind of hid my problems with these and took them, you know, took them out of the issues. But that is not at the fault of Nuka World, but more the fault of the core gameplay of Fallout 4. So that's my non-spoiler opinion of Nuka World. Now let's talk in depth about this DLC. First of all, let's talk setup. Now the setup in this game was amazing. The gauntlet was the first time in a while my character actually risked dying and the train li the train ride, Jesus, with the view of Nuka World was perfect. But the first annoyance becomes apparent very quickly. NPCs talk about this amazing gauntlet run I did, but because it was so difficult, I ended up crouch walking and taking it really slow to the point that the commentator was constantly saying, you gotta pick it up, man. And yet everyone was like, you did amazing. So not reacting to the player's actions, check. Following that is by far the most simple plot I've seen in a while, and it's hand waved by the fact that they're being bandits and their faction is not at all complex. <clears throat> like every faction in this game. <laughs> The name of the game is to get three raider factions to work together by clearing slash securing all the major sections of Nuka World, but as there are five areas and three factions, one will get left behind, they won't like it, and they'll turn on you at the end of the DLC. Boring. The locations on the other hand, very varied within the wasteland setting. Now my initial expectation, if you look back into my previous video where I talked about, you know, theories about it was that we'd get Borderlands 2 level variation where completely different looking settings with some sort of explanation, but no, we didn't get that. But I wasn't entirely wrong. Every area does have its own little style to them, obviously, that still fits into this apocalyptic scenario. The Galactic Zone in particular, while not the futuristic dream zone I wanted with, you know, aliens inside the area woven into the quest line because I wanted more aliens, but it was still pretty good with all the robots. Every zone had its own interesting facets and I enjoyed doing each and every mission. But one question must be asked, why the hell is Sito not a goddamn follower? It's awfully sweet of y'all to welcome a stranger into your home. You've no idea how happy we are that we ran into you. Not as happy as I am. What are you doing? Wait, I thought you were here to... I don't know why Bethesda decided on this whole one new follower limit for every DLC. Probably some sort of cost saving thing, but I'd rather Sito than the dude we got. Anyway, with, with that said, the enemy types in each area were completely uninspiring, and I'm pretty sure the only completely new enemy was the ant enemies. Everyone else felt like a reskin of something from the base game. You know, the gator claws, death claws, the stupid worm things felt like... Mole rats, yes, that's what I'm looking for, mole rats. But after all that, you unlock raiding the commonwealth, which feels basically like Miniman Quest but evil. And if you cringe at that thought, then this part may not be for you and it really wasn't for me. And more importantly, unless you actually built a settlement with tons of defenses and cool stuff and decided to raid your own settlement, most of the raiding will be on relatively defenseless people with a couple of hired bodies to shoot. Again, I said it in one of my, you know, 
videos where I talk about how to make Fallout better. If you were able to download settlements, this would be less of a problem because then it could be pretty cool raiding some super souped up Minutemen settlement that someone else designed halfway across the world. And finally, we get to the new items that are added to the game. Now, they're a mix of awesome and disappointment because you got things like the Quantum X01 power armor, which I know a lot of people were pissed at from a lore standpoint. But this could have easily been fixed by having it just be, instead of XO with custom paint, actually a new model for it. Make it look like a prototype, have pieces missing from it, or hell, just not have the entire set. That could have easily been XO, torso, helmet, and left arm on a blank power frame otherwise, and you can be like, yeah, it's a prototype. They never finished it before the war. But Bethesda didn't do that. Ugh. Other items like the acid soaker, which some hate that particular weapon, that just shows the imbalance of Fallout. It's a good concept, but Fallout 4 didn't really have the idea of a secondary weapon that's meant to support your other weapons. Instead, it just simply gave you more power into other weapons and told, basically had you switch to them further into the game you got. So obviously not many people reacted positively to the sudden inclusion of a secondary support weapon. Rounding out my annoyances with the weapons is that any positive change Nuke World made to the weapon customization system is exclusive to Nuke World and its content. Gun paints, which should be on every single gun in the game after they were announced because it's just a good idea and a good level of customization, are exclusive to the handmade rifles. And all Nuke World weapons are also ignored by the perk that allows you to find ammo. That's a small point, but a critical point to me because that was actually key to my build. Ugh. Despite all of this, the added weapons were a blast. I love the handmade rifle, I love the water gun, and all the fancy Nuka based equipment that you could find in the game. All the way to the stupid Nuka based power armors that weren't new models but instead just new paints. Ugh. So yeah, all in all you can see how unimpressed I was with this DLC, which is sad. I love the dialogue for the bandit factions but there just wasn't enough there for me to ignore the flaws of Fallout 4. Hopefully when modders break this game down and build it up, and you can see it in some ways right now, I can truly enjoy my next trip to Nuka World. So yeah, those are my thoughts on Nuka World. Sorry for this video being super goddamn late, but as a side effect for being late, other people who watch these videos can probably have their own experiences with Nuka World, so leave in the comments what you thought about the DLC, or even what you look forward to out of modding because you know, that's the next step. But that does not support in the game anymore except for bug fixes. Maybe we can look forward to a new Vegas style expansion by another developer that Bethesda hands the reins to. Either way, I'll see you guys next time.